Well, thank you uh, to the hosts of Net Zero for Nuclear, allowing us to leverage the stage in a brief time. I know we're already running a little bit behind schedule, but I think if there's something really important, it's truly my honor to share this stage with distinguished representatives from Canada, France, Japan, and the United Kingdom. Um, we'll each say a few words about a statement we've agreed upon, and then I'll read that statement. We'll take a little photo, um, but it's, it's an exciting moment. Um, ultimately, alongside the G7 meeting in Sapporo this year, a group of like-minded nations, this one, issued a statement committing to collaborate on strategic opportunities in uranium extraction, conversion, enrichment, and fabrication in support of civil nuclear energy worldwide. In the many months since that statement, my team and the counterparts across these nations, with, uh, these folks and their leadership, um, have been executing that collaboration, quantifying the qualitative, establishing numbers where there were only ideas. And as we know well, in the context of climate goals in COP28 and others, we must honestly and transparently measure our capabilities today against our goals for tomorrow. So accordingly, our teams have worked diligently um, to quantitative, quantitatively compare our projections of enriched uranium demands and reliable supplies as expected in the coming decades. When we have identified, we then have identified the immediate near-term investments we think are necessary to bridge that gap and have pursued investment pledges that may begin to bridge it. In the US, President Biden, of course, presented a request to Congress for billions of dollars in support of su supplemental funding to support expansion of domestic fuel cycle capacity. And I think, as has been mentioned on this stage, once every five minutes, uh, we must strive to triple civil nuclear power to meet our 2050 net zero goals. But to do that, we must secure trustworthy sources of enriched uranium. It'll be millions of kilograms of uranium hexafluoride per year of conversion capacity, millions of separative work units of enrichment capacity, and by clarifying the magnitude of this challenge and beginning to spur investment in seriousness, I'm confident that we're capable of displacing untrustworthy sources of this, my favorite clean fuel. So I applaud these partners in crime here, and I'm looking forward to their statements. And then I'll read this statement we've agreed upon announcing our uh, pursuit of these investment goals. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cassie. Thank you, dear colleagues from the Sapporo Five. Um, thank you all for your involvement in this objective, uh, the objective of this joint statement, which is reducing dependence to, to Russia for our um, nuclear fuel. Um, as you recall, uh, Cathy, uh, the statement tripling nuclear energy endorsed by 22 countries, including the Sapporo Five countries, is an ambitious turning point in the recognition of the significant role played by nuclear energy to curb greenhouse gas emissions. This statement complements the actions undertaken and that uh, we all share during this, uh, this session and uh, through this COP. The situation in Ukraine, though, uh, and its consequences on the security of supply have highlighted the need to strengthen our energy sovereignty, enhancing capacities in uranium conversion and enrichment have turned into a top agenda subject. To get away from the dependence uh, on uh, Russian fuel and ensure European and Western energy sovereignty, the SAPRO-5 should support any ongoing effort to de develop uranium conversion and enrichment capacities and to diversify nuclear fuel supplies without creating new dependencies. However, these projects need economic visibility from customers. The purpose of this statement is to offer direction to our respective industries on the necessity to undertake a public-private effort to better increase the capacities of conversion and enrichment. Long-term commitment between the nuclear enrichers and converters and the companies operating nuclear power plants is a most suitable way of increasing capacities while reducing uncertainties to secure the investment. France is taking a prominent part in the reduction of like-minded countries' dependencies to Russia as evidenced by the extension project of Orano's enrichment facility, George Best 2, George Best 2, sorry, announced recently uh, about 1.7 billion euros are to be invested over the next few years to increase the capacity of this plant. This will imply an increase in the production that will meet the needs of our partners. One of the challenges we are facing to convince other like-minded countries to join this effort on the reduction of dependencies as some of our partners remain highly dependent to Russian fuel. 
France acts in close coordination with its partners in Europe on the matter, and notably on nuclear fuel assemblies for VVR nuclear project pathways. This effort is to be pursued at government level over the next few months, and thank you again for, uh, to you and your team, Cathy, and to all of our teams for um, putting together the statement. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Hoff, for your leadership in bringing us together here and uh, to your, your team and, and the rest of the U.S. government team and to my colleagues. It's a real honour to be here today representing Canada. Uh, I'm very proud we have a very strong Canadian contingent here today, Minister Todd Smith, who just spoke, and, and a, a really good team uh, represented by uh, John and the Canadian Nuclear Association and our utilities. So Canada is very proud to join uh, in this statement. Canada is committed to nuclear. We signed on to the tripling pledge. As you heard from Minister Smith, uh, Canada has been successfully uh, um, generating nuclear energy for decades now, and we are committed to increasing our capacity. And of course, Canada is also a really important provider of uranium, and we have uh, two really important companies here, uh, Cameco and, and also uh, Orano, that uh, are both very active. Um, in developing uranium resources in the beautiful province of Saskatchewan in Western Canada and and Canada can be Canada is a trusted partner and we, and we have lots to contribute in this space of course as we move to develop SMRs in Canada we're going to need enriched fuels um, we, we have the front end of the fuel cycle not so much uh, the back end where we need help from our partners which is why it makes a lot of sense uh, to join in this statement so thank you very much and I will pass the floor to my colleague. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Catherine. And the, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, and excellencies, um, first, uh, I really would like to thank the Net Zero Nuclear to give us such a nice uh, setting for us to announce our new initiatives, SAPRO 5. And the, uh, I'm proud that the uh, statement uh, uh, named SAPRO 5 statement um, because uh, Sapporo is obviously the name of the uh, city in Japan. And I was joining the uh, G7 Sapporo Ministerial uh, held in this April and did a uh, speech on behalf of Metin Minister Mr. Nishimura uh, when the uh, nuclear association of the, of the uh, five countries signed the MOU. And the, um, well, uh, uh, in this COP, uh, 22 countries uh, joined the uh, new nuclear initiative, uh, uh, tripling the uh, nuclear capacity by 2050. And the uh, enhancing nuclear technologies, especially the uh, new nuclear fuel supply chain among uh, five countries and beyond, is very much necessary to advance this uh, initiative. Um, enhancing uh, fuel supply chain, yeah, especially the uh, HEDU, uh, is very much necessary for the development of the uh, new reactors and the uh, new uh, um, advanced reactors. Um, in Japan, uh, we have had the, a very difficult time in the last 10 years after the Fukushima accident. Uh, still, uh, we are starting to move forward. And the, with the uh, development of uh, 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 innovative reactors uh, uh, as one of the uh, key items of our uh, new green transform transformation policy of Japanese government. Um, we have restarted the uh, operations of the, uh, our domestic uranium enrichment plant and now, uh, moving, uh, now making efforts uh, to expand the uh, production volume. Now we will continue to work with our colleagues uh, from around the world to uh, ensure that the, uh, we attract more investments in the nuclear industry and uh, uh, nuclear fuel industries as well. I um, uh, really would like to uh, work with you and to our hosts uh, today, uh, Net Zero Nuclear, for bringing us all together. As many have already said, it's very clear that we will not achieve our net zero and climate ambitions without nuclear. And that is why, as the other, uh, uh, my colleagues have said, it was so important to hear the announcements at COP 
of the pledge to triple global nuclear deployment by 2050, signed by over 20 countries. This is about raising the profile of nuclear and about, as the previous uh, panel uh, discussed, about starting to educate globally on the vital role that uh, nuclear will play. I'd also like to take the opportunity to congratulate the UAE alongside the IEA for hosting the first ever COP presidency event on nuclear uh, earlier in the week, which again was addressing uh, the importance uh, of nuclear uh, in addressing our climate uh, change challenges. Um, as we seek to deliver on these nuclear ambitions, collaboration has never been more important, including in ensuring a stable and sustainable supply of fuel not only for the reactors of today, but also for the advanced nuclear technologies of the future. And the UK is very uh, happy to be part of these uh, group of allies and to support the announcement uh, today of the follow-up to the supply statement. Multilateral efforts are paramount for ensuring global energy security. No net zero without nuclear, and we will not meet our nuclear ambitions without a sustainable fuel supply. So I would like to thank the US for their leadership uh, on this issue and our Sapporo Fired allies for their cooperation on this vitally important agenda. Thank you. Oh, I hear the music, so we probably can't read the statement. Is there still one minute? Okay, it'll take one minute. Is that okay? All right. Um, on the occasion of the 28th Conference of the Parties, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP28, convened here in the United Arab Emirates on this seventh day of December, recognizing that we five nations of the G7 organized in Sapporo are collectively responsible for 50% of the world's uranium conversion and enrichment production capacity, recognizing the global aspirational goal to triple nuclear energy generation by 2050, and particularly the need for resilient supply chains, including fuel to deliver safe and secure nuclear technologies, as affirmed by the Net Zero Nuclear Declaration. The nations colloquially, colloquially known as the Sapporo Five include Canada, Japan, France, the United Kingdom, and the United States. We resolve to promote public-private investment in enriched uranium production capacity free from Russian material. We resolve to establish a resilient global uranium supply market free from Russian influence and the potential to be subject to political leverage by other countries. We resolve to work toward enabling the investment of government or private-led financial resources necessary to increase our own conversion and enriched uranium production capacity and to advance efforts to secure reliable nuclear fuel suppliers. We underscore announcements to pursue at least US dollars 4.2 billion in government-led and private investment in our five nations' collective enrichment and conversion capacity over the next three years with a view to catalyze private sector finance without prejudice of open market rules among like-minded nations. And we invite nuclear electricity generating utilities or direct nuclear energy industrial end users of like-minded nations to develop long-term supply strategies that signal and provide confidence to the industry to make the relevant investment to increase their capacity. And finally, we invite all like-minded nations seeking reliable nuclear energy partners to join us in securing the global uranium supply chain. Thank you.